Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, I am uh, Max Warsh, the director of programming at NADA. Um, we are very excited to have, with you, have you with us here for this program, along with Ezekwe Mohammed and Good Weather Gallery in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, first, we will hear a new sound work by Ezekwe, Outside and With Place, that is situated within the exhibition at Good Weather. Uh, the exhibition itself, uh, Welcome Home a Sunday Afternoon, happens within Mariel Kapana's mural, Little Stone Open Home at, at Good Weather. And we'll hear a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, after the sound piece, there will be a short discussion with Ezekwe and Haynes. And we'll also take any questions from attendees at that time. If you do have a question, uh, please put them in the chat and we'll answer them then. After that, uh, Ezekwe will do a raffle drawing for one of the sandwiches from the installation. Um, proceeds from the raffle tickets go to support the Amboy Community Food Pantry, which is a local nonprofit that serves Good Weather City of North Little Rock in Arkansas. And thank you to anybody who's already contributed. Um, if you still want to get a raffle ticket, uh, this is your last chance. They're $20. And until the end of the sound piece, which will last about 15 minutes, uh, you can get a ticket still through Ezekwe's PayPal, which we will add into the chat as well. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass it off to Haynes Riley from Good Weather Gallery. Um, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Max. Um, thanks, Max. Yeah. So what we're doing here is like a live simulcast of uh, an exhibition which Ezekwe Muhammad has worked on over the course of you know the past six months. And so anyways, what, what you're seeing here in the video uh, is some close-ups of that, as well as like a full view of a space in North Little Rock, Arkansas. So I'm just gonna give a little context of what Good Weather is and what this space is, and then sort of hand it over for Ezekwe's sound work. And then afterwards, we'll have a discussion about uh, all the different layers uh, of this. So uh, Good Weather is a gallery that was started in 2011, and it, started in a suburban garage in, in Lakewood uh, in North Little Rock, which is a city uh, across from the capital city of Little Rock in Arkansas. And at the end of 2017, artist Muriel Capana came uh, and produced a solo exhibition, which turned into a permanent fresco and ongoing work, uh, which has served as the backdrop now for three different iterations of programming uh, at our at Good Weather's original gallery address. <clears throat> so what you're seeing here uh, is the third iteration of that. The first was uh, a work by Dustin Metz that lived in the space for three months. Uh, last year, we programmed an exhibition of sculpture and paintings by artist Dan Gunn from Chicago. And then this year, the programming sort of, uh, in this programming, we invited Ezekwe to bring this uh, suite of traveling sculptures that we'd seen him present uh, in Mexico and Puerto Rico and elsewhere. Uh, and we asked, you know, we asked Ezekwe to sort of present these works in this space. And we'll talk more about that conversation and, and, and the, the picnickers. But for now, let's uh, pass it on to Ezekwe, uh, who can really premiere this, this sound work. And, uh, you know, we can all sort of be in the space together. Yeah, thanks for thanks for tuning in. Thanks for thanks for having me, Max Haynes, and you know behind the scenes, you know, Aaron and Hunter. It's about uh, it's about fourteen fifteen minutes, so I'm gonna turn off my video and and play a jam for y'all. Nice.
Come on, let dad go. Mama! Take Kate, you turn to go. Don't blow the car, sorry. No, mom, move, Malik, the mom of the team. Turn left, turn that way, Turn Turn <laughs> Come on, Joe. Come here, Tom, baby. subway with people surrounding me and you know, who are crowded. Um, I'd say that looking at the news and reading something terrible tragedies that occur every single day, but that is just that one day that it hits you harder and you feel disconnected or out of the loop of the world. Um, when things don't go according to plan, you intended to get to a place a certain time and you really you missed your buzz or you anyway, I definitely hate when that happens. Um and a day in which I don't speak to my mom. It's usually a bad day. Whether it is because I didn't have time or the opportunity or don't feel like it. <laughs> it's usually not a great day if I don't talk to her.
But I've seen the rest of the city, it's pretty good. There's going to be a lot of quiet, clean streets, and plenty of room for the kids to play in. There are too many parks and swimming pools around my neighborhood. The kids are getting a good break at the schools, too. New buildings, equipment, books, and so on. The stuff at my school is pretty old. I haven't been out of my own neighborhood too much, but I guess what impresses me most in other neighborhoods is the sense of space. There's nothing jammed up against anything else, and there's lots of room to breathe. I guess the city is a pretty good place to live in for most people. Me, I live in another part of the city. <laughs> The perfect day would be waking up without an alarm clock, and the weather is nice and sunny. I would have some coffee and start listening to my music and ride a bike to the park or to the beach. It's so quiet. And I made a friend with my mother and my sister. And just hang out. And if you read a book, listen to my music, and have some good food. Mm. Some seafood or sushi. Yes. And, um, and go to sleep early. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, cool. So that uh, that was outside and with a place made for the for the for the show. Oh, and I can take my head. I can take my headphones off now. Right. That was incredible. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um. Yeah, and thank you to Hunter and Aaron for setting that up to, to really, I mean, really just like sort of, I don't know, my heart's beating a little bit because it gives life to, you know, objects, inanimate objects that already like, you know, we project certain things onto, but that, that right there, that experience, uh, I don't know, it's, it's unexpected. I know we were planning some things, uh, but it certainly... I don't know. That was the first time we just, just you know, it all came together. Um, wow, Ezekiel. <laughs> yeah, I was just hoping to hoping to give context to some of the things that I've been thinking about with this body of work. I never intended it to go on tour. <laughs> um, yeah. But you know, as as uh, you know, anybody that's seen it in person, um, again, I just have to say thanks to Aaron for really just uh, showing them such a nice time. You know, mm -hmm. stops along the way from here mm -hmm. down down to North Little Rock. They're full people. Yeah, you know, they have personalities. I feel like the more porous an object is, yeah. the more space inside of it exists. For these ghosts, yeah. So if I can make a starting point that is, you know, easily understandable, they're in the form and shape of people. Mm -hmm. They sort of fold and move like people. I remember when I was trying to get them to to fold up and move around when I was building these, I couldn't figure out how to get the legs to work. And I was like, oh, right, like our legs work. They're just <laughs> different versions of people. But what are these bodies able to do that ours aren't? What are the spaces that they can inhabit? I don't mm -hmm. have access to anybody's personal form at, a, at an intimate level where I can measure all parts of a said person. So they're all my scale. Yeah. So they're, they're all pretty sized. Yeah, I try, I was like, oh, if I just take two inches off, then one's smaller than another. So they're kind of different, but they're all different versions of, of my size. So seeing them, you know, take actions that yeah. I would like to, but can't always. The first place that these were were at public swim gallery in the like lower east side chinatown in uh, manhattan uh, new york at the end of last year i believe wow uh, i none of us have any sense of time right now but that also feels like yesterday somehow yeah so um, you know brown bodies being allowed to have time of leisure, physical space in which we can congregate without being bothered, being able to stay in one place for a long period of time, which is something that is inherent in the you know sculptural medium, which is why I thought this would be a great space for for sculpture. I know you know a lot of people have heard me say this. Idea comes first follow the form of the idea, and then the object is gonna make sense in the end, right? Yeah. So them being sculptures, living in you know, these variety of different spaces, they're able to literally hold a room that a black person sitting somewhere for a fraction of that time very likely would not. So what are some of the, what are some of the stories that live in the spaces where these concerns are. Mm -hmm. What does a good day look like? Which for some of us is you know, very simple. For others of us can be a little more complicated. What about the neighborhoods that we live in? 
What are yeah. the sounds that live in those spaces? Where are the places that we can go where nobody is going to be looking over their shoulder at us or us have to look over our shoulder? For me, that's always any place with water. Because if you're at you know, river, beach, ocean, chances are we're both looking for the same thing. So I think of it like going to a, a sporting event. Me and you may not be friends outside of here, but we both have on this same weird you know, Buffalo Bills jersey. So I know there's certain decisions that you've made that I also have made that are going to let us get to further stuff, right? So trying to provide what that what that soundscape looks like both you know location based word based a little less word based and you know thank you for providing me uh, space to do so Haynes yeah no it's all the things that you're speaking to you know when i think about this work specifically in the context that it is uh it it really sort of brings up you know, an opportunity to have discussion about what space is and who space is for. And I think when, when I think about this work specifically, there is a way that an artist and a gallery adapt to each other to operate, to sort of really provide space for then their creative spirits to kind of come out and work that they're doing. And I guess what I'm, when I'm hearing you talk about this work and when I think about the sound piece that we were able to present via Zoom with Nada and like, you know, really sort of expand what this work is and expand the meaning of it in, in the space that it currently is in North Little Rock. Uh, it makes me, yeah, it, it, you know, it, it, it fills me with a lot of joy uh, to, to, to be able to to do that and to, to see you make work that has so much meaning and work that has so much, like you said before, like porousness for, for these conversations to sort of enter. Uh, I did, I wanted to mention a few things as you had just about this, this, this work itself uh, and, and the, the kind of serendipity of it. And I'll, I'll try to be brief uh, because essentially in December, uh, we, we were talking about this and, and Leah Dixon, uh, who's a close, you know, advocate of yours uh, and shown your work in many places and who I've seen your work through uh, was so excited to connect us to make this happen this past December. And then the pandemic hit and then like things changed with like even the meaning of this uh, work in a sense, like the idea that these, these folks could travel and, and the way they traveled was stupendous. You, and you mentioned Erin picking them up and bringing them on her camping trip with her, you know, and picnicking in, in, in New Hampshire and nas national parks or national forest and then elsewhere while she was traveling and, and ultimately landing here in North Little Rock in July. Uh, and on a timeline that we hadn't, you know, we had to sort of reshift around uh, what had happened, but again, pandemic, Black Lives Matter movement, uh, like having another resurgence, you know, uh, 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 uprisings. And, and there's so much of this idea that it couldn't have happened at a better time. And I think that's just kind of the investment that you've put into your work and your community and the spaces that you're sort of in, both in New York nationally and internationally. Uh, for us though, uh, you, you know, you, you, you came back with the title. It was like, welcome home a Sunday afternoon. And it literally on a personal level was like the first day uh, that our uh, nibbling came home from the, from the hospital, uh, Zoe. And that was a Sunday afternoon. You know, Zoe was born on like a Thursday or Friday and Zachary and Taylor, my brother and sister-in-law who live in the house that, and own the house, which is this space. And this is, Good weather, uh, as good weather existed uh, for four, five, six, seven years. Uh, and what I said at the beginning, you know, it's Mariel Capana's 
project, Little Stone Open Home. It's a permanent fresco that we've been programming in. But for this iteration, all these this timing and this kismet around when it's happening, uh, it's it's inspiring in a sense because that that space that art opens up for people to have discussions and to learn about others' perspectives and to understand what Ezekiel is saying and what the work is saying. Uh, to that to begin on the day that that young person came home. And for Zeke to title this and, and without knowing even those kind of, you know, turn of events, uh, it really, it really just, yeah, when, when those things come together uh, at a moment in time, it's awesome. Well, I mean, it's one of those, it's one of those funny, funny situations where you make work around certain issues yeah um, you know just things you're thinking about you know stuff that you're um i guess signal boosting right yeah because yeah. you know, these are ideas that you know hit home for some of us but you know not for all of us again um it's taken what two to i guess seven months at this point who knows right like um two to three months of living in our, you know, thousand square foot homes with wine delivery and Netflix for us to finally understand what somebody in a five by five foot cell for 20 years for something mm -hmm. they haven't done mm -hmm. is living life. Mm -hmm. Now that's mm -hmm. less of an abstract. It's not a, that stinks. It's this stinks, right? So, trying to answer the question, you know, how has the pandemic changed your work? I mean, there's there's material concerns. You know, I'm not able to make, you know, larger scale work, which is something that I, I do as often um, as I, as space provides. But these issues that are coming to the fore at you know, this point are the same that a lot of us have been thinking about for a long time. Like yeah. this body of work predates this circumstance. Yeah, exactly. Right? Um, now, holding space, that phrase has changed so dramatically. And um, to be allowed into a space that holds so many and so much, because you know, Little Stone, open home, this fresco, you know, Mario Capena made with so many of the people mm -hmm. in North Little Rock. There's so many different small stories and pieces, and I asked um, you know, Haynes as we were talking about bringing this work down there. So could you send me like a few pictures of like some of the different areas so I can get a you know a better look around because you're not doing a site visit. Um, yeah. <laughs> so so trying to see what some of those moments were and then making new portions to add to what is already a continuing story is something that. I always hope to have space for and be able to do, you know, whenever, whenever possible. Um, if the, you know, the art humans in charge just kind of let me make more stuff they haven't seen for the mm -hmm. show, um, it's always going to feel more correct and more appropriate, right? And in this circumstance, uh, it worked out. I think I think very well. Um, I think when you think though, when you said they're gonna go on a picnic, <laughs> like what sparked? I mean, there's a picnic sitting right behind one of the uh, folks in the in the installation, uh, and that's circumstantial as well. But but that and that also was an amazing part of the fresco when Marielle uh, Capana brought in a class uh, 
from one of the local schools from horse man from the middle school and they did a, a fresco lesson for you know six hours that day and she taught them how to make fresco and then they painted fresco on the wall which happened to be that day the theme of a picnic and so hunter's walking in to get a detail of that you know and then there's this sense like azik was like picnic but then picnic in public space and black people in public space like these are subjects I'd love to hear more about that. You've talked to me about um, well, why so, that space is that space. Well, because there, for Black people, there is no such thing as private space. Because, mm -hmm. you know, private space is something where you can choose what enters into that piece of ground that you have, right? Because you go outside and it's anybody's concerns, anybody's noise, whatever. It's hard to sift out what comes in and what doesn't. But uh, at home, in a whatever your home space is, the idea of that specific word, not a house, but a home, because those can you know, be in whatever form or mm -hmm. shape that they, they come. You can either leave all of that out or pick and choose what comes in, right? But if you can't pick and choose what comes in, then it sort of invalidates the space that you're trying to build, which is home, and then leaves you with another version of a public. So mm -hmm. sometimes that's good, sometimes that's not so good. Because, you know, one of those concerns is always safety. You know, I don't yeah. want to have somebody um, harm my physical form. They can't do that behind this door that only me and two or three other people have a key to. Right. But if you go outside and we're killed outside, but then you enter your home and then you're killed inside of your home, mm -hmm. then what's the difference between those two spaces, mm -hmm. right? Your home is a space for rest, to have access to resources. I know, how many times have you heard there's food at home, right? Mm -hmm. um, you have your food, you have your water, and these are clearly ideal circumstances. Not everybody has access to any of these things at all times, but that's one of the things that we're trying to help do today is yes. um, address um, the access to one of those very important you know, tenants, um, access to food, right? So if you're outside, is the same as your inside. Then the activities that you take in one space are going to mirror the other. So you have the person on the Bluetooth speaker playing the music that they would be playing in their house outside because that's also mm -hmm. their home. We've done that to them. That's not their decision. We've made, we've stretched that door out to infinity. Right. Mm -hmm. So what does it look like to try and hold a private version of a public activity in a public space? It's why I'm always super interested in the, the Black Cookout, right? How yeah. many Tyler Perry movies have we had to acknowledge and maybe not watch that are based around this idea. How many songs, stories, tales, it's just, we know that there is a finite amount of resources and space that we can claim, but <clears throat> I'm able to hold six feet and you're able to hold 10 and mm. this other person can hold 12. I don't know, what's that, 28, right? 
Did I do the numbers? Um, that's a lot more space than you had just on your own there. Mm -hmm. So getting together and pooling resources. I know the community word gets thrown around a lot, but you know the point of community is, again, sharing resources, trying to spread. So doing that in a home, for many of us, we don't have that much space. So it has to be outside. And also, again, outside is also our home. So what's the so what's the difference between those two spaces? Right. I yeah, it's it's interesting now specifically, like play, the kind of hospitality that good weather exists on is very difficult to to uh, match because of like the pandemic, because of the bubbles that we now are all in as far as like the social activities. And so again, not to, cause these folks have been, you know, on the beach, you know, in spaces in Puerto Rico where we saw them, they've been in bars and, and like in smaller, you know, gathering spaces. And now before the pandemic, let's have a picnic. Now with this, pandemic in you know like in our lives like this is the way that we can form community on zoom through screens in public spaces six feet apart gathering to eat and to to convene um it's interesting i i think the sound work with just to give context to those watching like as you know zeke and max ran into each other at some event, socially distancing, and uh, Max reached out and said, "You have this Ezekwe piece up. I'd love to do an event around it." And then I talked to Ezekwe, and Ezekwe said the first time, "I think you said this word, Zoom exhausted, or <laughs> I'm exhausted from the amount of Zooms I've been doing, or the amount of Zooms I've signed up for and missed. Or, you know, and that's in my case, many. Um, it's just so much. So." I, Ezekwe and I brainstormed and was like, what can this be that isn't just this discussion? Um, and yeah, then your brain went some, somewhere like a sound work. And this is incredible. Like how did that, that, all this kind of sound you've been gathering, has it happened over the course of the three weeks? Or is this from years of, of picking up like your environment? So, so both I have, um, I just do, I do sound recording, you know, whenever um, the time and place is available to me. Um, so I have a, a backlog of noises that I can pull from, you know, in circumstances like this, where me and Max uh, bumped into each other was at a show I had at the Elijah Wheat showroom in Newburgh, New York. And the way that Elijah Wheat showroom is built, it's on... You take an elevator up to get there. It's on a giant swath of land. So it's, you know, the pod that you came in can go up, see whatever. Mm -hmm. Everybody else can be way more than six feet apart if they're interested. It's directly on the Hudson. It's just sitting wow. right. It's 15 feet away from the water. So, you know, whenever I'm up there, I have, I have my audio recorder and you can you can hear the water. The smell of it is constant. You know, I I I had mentioned you know my relation to water a little bit a little bit earlier. So as I as I, I bumped into Max as he came to you know one of the events in tandem with the show at Elijah Weed Showroom, I had already been thinking about this. I had already had because the I mean the sound of the water is there when you're at the showroom. So mm -hmm. this was like already in my head. And as you know, we're thinking about you know public programming that makes more sense in this time and space that we are currently sharing. Mm -hmm. Something where you didn't necessarily need to have a screen, where you could get up and kind of walk around the room some, right? Um, where you would have an opportunity to pick your level of engagement mm -hmm. and select 
where your um, where your starting point of interaction comes from. It felt like it made the most sense. So yeah. as I was putting together the soundscape, um, some of the pieces are, you know, sound sound bites, clips that I've had from, you know, other things that never never made it out of the, the sound folder. Others were, you know, newly made just for this. And then once you have everything laid out, then you kind of move it around and see what what else um, can turn those corners for you, right? Mm -hmm. So, so uh, it was nice to be able to to sit down, and for me, it was nice for me <laughs> to be able yeah. to sit down and make something for this space and um, simulate an experience that I enjoy when I have in this computer space when there's something to look at if you want to, but if not, just go like walk around, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So trying to let people still tune in, but use the rest of their physical space. Um, however, they're, however they're interested in doing so. Yeah. I do. I want to say one thing and then ask a question. We, well, if anybody has any questions, uh, I think uh, Max has the chat open for you to, to sort of pick up and be part of the conversation. <clears throat> we do have a raffle that Max mentioned at the beginning. And I don't know if we wanna check on that while we're talking. Yeah, there's a little, so we got, you know, donations uh, up to 15 donations so far at $20. Uh, Ezekwe's costing in a hundred and Good Weather's matching that for a hundred. That's $500 so far that this sort of program has, um, uh, you know, built into it a, a, a way to, to give back to the community. And in this sense, give back to North Little Rock, the community, a community in North Little Rock, uh, that being the Amboy Community uh, Food Pantry, uh, which is a food bank in our city. Uh, what I was wanting to, so yes, ask questions, donate soon so you can get part of the raffle. My question was, uh, Mary Ellen's in the audience. I, I don't think she's on video or not, but like when I think about her work in this uh, fresco, every time, you know, it's been in this space for three plus years, every time I enter the space, there's something new uh, to, to encounter, to find. And I felt like the layers that were happening in the sound work at, I need other listens with it, just to sort of live with that work and see what else uh, I can pick up. Cause at some point I was texting Hunter uh, and Aaron, like, you know, it, it feels like these people and like inside their head, what they're thinking as they're at this picnic, you know? And, and that, I think that only landed because Hunter was like on one of their faces with the, the close up videos. Yeah, that was just great. I, I love that y'all came up with that. That was just so, so wonderful. Thank you. It was like all these bubbles were just like, yeah, it's so, it was so good. It was so good. And the sound work like within that space and within that experience was really, really layered. And, and, I, and I think that aspect of it and the aspect of this Zoom call, like it's like, what is Zoom? And, and as it's adjacent to the things that we're doing, what we wanted to do and what we, I think you did successfully as Equay was turn Zoom into another tool, another platform to create work. So, and to layer this experience, you have Marielle's, you have the gallery of good weather, which turned into Marielle's fresco, which has turned into a program within itself. And now you have your installation of, of sculptural objects of this picnic uh, that's happening there and then the sound through this digital experience that is fleeting but record it uh, all of that turns into this to this living you know work of art uh, and yours will go on and live new lives the fresco will go on and live new lives we all will go on and kind of changed in that way and that's yeah i'll start stop speaking so much but i, I just wanted to reflect on that and point out the kind of 
Well, let's get to something fun. Let's get yeah, to yeah, yeah. Fun, right? Let's let's pick a name out of the lunchbox. Right? Do we have all the people in? Is everybody? Yeah, everybody yeah. Answered? So we've got all the we've got all the people in. I just refreshed the page here. Okay. I've got everybody written down and and listed. Um, so let's. I'm not. Wait, this is. <laughs> Look, I can't, I can't, look, I can't look. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Wait, how, who folded theirs extra tight? So you, you might feel some textural difference there. Oh, no, I, I just cut them up. I mean, this is, so um, during my, during my, my tenure as an educator, this was my favorite way to pretend like it wasn't up to me. Um, <laughs> who went first in the presentation? Yeah, or? always, always just pick out of <laughs> put your name down, pick out of a hat, right? Just don't, right? So, yeah, no, this is the same way that I've been doing this for 20 years, <laughs> but there's an this actual a, winner this time. Let's there's see. some suspense, though. This is lots of suspense. Yeah, raffles um, are great. Okay, let's see what we got. Um, oh no, oh, oh wow, no. O Owen Duffy. There you go. Owen Duffy. Okay. But is Owen Duffy in the audience? I don't know. I don't know if Owen's I don't know if Owen's here, but Owen uh Owen just just won themselves uh, a sandwich. Let's see the let's see the name on the paper though cuz this uh, this, there, this there we go. That's Owen amazing. Duffy. Yeah. So um I know I know Owen. I'll just I'll give it I'll give it to him personally. Wow. Yeah, Super let's get cool. a close up of this sandwich. This this is Zeke's got a sandwich in the studio like the ones in the installation here. Yep. So what what is on the sandwich? Uh, lettuce, mayonnaise, tomatoes. Well, I try to make I try to make it so that there's some sort of uh, a color palette, right? So yeah. it's like vegetable, meat, and then another <laughs> so another substance. That like might be like cheese, or maybe it's mustard, or like maybe yeah. it's, I try to leave it open. Yeah, you my, choose. <laughs> yeah, because my favorite sandwich is the surprise sandwich. You know, when someone's like, "Hey, like you hungry?" Like, "Oh yeah, scary. Give me a sandwich." I'm like, "What's this? This what? A, what? Like that's the best sandwich you can have." Yeah, yeah. You know? So I try your imagination. To, yeah, it's, the it's imagination for, yeah. sandwich. And it was like yeah. um. Like that weird scene from uh, Robin Williams' Hook. <laughs> you know, like, oh, you know, yeah, like, Rufio, and they just imagine all the food there. Yeah, right? That just feels wonderful, because, you know, all eating is a ceremony of some sort, because wow. if you really just needed nutrients, like 15 pills on a bar, you're good, right? But if you're choosing to eat specific things, there's a ritual that you're going through, where the ingredients are coming from, the ritual of the time that you went to go get the stuff, the potential of you sharing it with somebody that is time spent, and then resources shared. It's a whole other circumstance that you're going through when you're choosing the decisions of how to keep your motor running. Right. Hey. Yeah, yeah. So trying to not put too fine a nail on the head with whatever we're handing out, but it's definitely in um, sandwich shape. And, you know, as Haynes said, we made about, you know, 500 bucks to, you know, get some, um, get some maybe sandwiches into the hands of some hungry people. So that feels real cool. So thank you, That's everybody, for, for helping us to do that, which really, really feels like the reason for the season. Right. Yeah, this was awesome. I guess... To, to close out, if, if, if nobody's asking any questions, uh, Azikwe, can you give a little shout out to your to your uh, your DJ set on WFMU so everybody can tune in? Oh, super cool. Yeah. Uh, every Wednesday from three to five, you can find me on WFMU's streaming portion. Give the drummer radio. So you just go to the website. It's right there. Um, or, you know, I don't, man, I had to close my internet to 
make the video <laughs> work. To drop it, yeah, drop a link in the chat. Yeah, uh, just FM. Yeah, FMU Black Helmet. Every Wednesday from from three to five. Um, all the archived shows are up there. New shows every week. We're doing you know special shows this week, and then this is the last week of our October Hellraiser, trying to you know raise some bucks to keep independent radio going because they're um, it's all it's all listener it's all listener funded. So mm -hmm. wow, I hopefully people follow up on this and we can send a link to that. But yeah, WFMU. Uh, give the drummer radio is it's a, on the website. You can find a link to it. And that's three to five Eastern time. Uh, DJ black helmet, which is a Zekeway's, Yeah. A name. Um, does anybody from not want to tune in right now and say anything closing statements or. Yeah, I would just say thank you so much um, to Ezekwe and Haynes and everyone at Good Weather. This was such a great conversation. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. so wonderful that we could support um, the community around the gallery and also see this great exhibition, both exhibitions and sort of all the layering that come, that goes on within, yeah, all of these practices. So yeah, this was, thank you to everybody. Yeah, this is awesome. Uh, great, great. So, uh, see, see everybody in another corner of the internet, right? All right yes. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Peace, Thanks. everyone.